thought how I thought we would start this workshop engaging students with self accountability is with a fun exercise that is similar to different things I'm trying out in Zoom just to engage students and to encourage them to participate. So um, here's what I'm talking about. Here's an example. Typically, we start by introducing ourselves, and I want to make it a little bit fun. So um, yesterday, I was cleaning my house, and I found my old football, and I thought, oh, I missed throwing the ball. So I thought, can one of you guys, can somebody throw me the football, and I'll catch it? Just throw me a football. Just throw, just throw the ball at me. Just an imaginary fake ball. We'll just pretend you have a ball. Ah, thanks. I got, I got three balls. I got Julie's ball. I got Anna's ball, and I got Thomas's ball. Thanks. Now that you threw me the ball, it's my job to say um, my name, where I teach, and my discipline. So after I say those things, I'm going to throw the ball to somebody. I'm going to call you by name, and you have to catch it. Don't fumble the ball. And then it's your turn to introduce yourself with your discipline in your college. So thanks for throwing me that ball, guys. I got it. Thank you all for being here. This is, um, we're, we're uh, the Teaching and Learning Center at Palo Alto is a new unit on campus. This is really our first year of operation. And we've been trying to, um, we have limited staff, so we've been trying to get our own faculty experts to present during these webinar sessions. And we're able to offer a small stipend for the work they put into preparation and delivering the uh, webinar. So we, we appreciate you being here. And at the end, I'm going to um, ask you to complete a brief survey about your experience and give Matilda some feedback. So thank you. Okay, how's my audio? Is Has it improved? Yeah, yes. That's better. So what I was saying was that fun activity of throwing the ball, it's lighthearted, it's easily customizable for any other class discussion. And you can switch it up in so many different ways. One of the things I do is I'll have them um, follow my instructions with their hands and we'll like do the robot together. Or um, there's this thing Beyonce does where she has everyone, her concert um, audience. She'll say, um, <laughs> you, you may be familiar with this. It's very popular, Beyonce Knowles. She says, say, hey, Miss Carter, and everyone in the audience, like thousands and thousands of her fans say, hey, Miss Carter, but I say, hey, Miss Stout. But the students, like, it makes them laugh. And even though some of you, like, you couldn't turn on your camera, some students won't be able to turn it on their camera, but there's, you're still sort of gently nudging them to be present, to be active, and to participate, too, and, and to know that they're seen as well. I'm going to share my screen, and this is engaging students with self-accountability. And so what that means is I'm going to walk you through three specific exercises that you can easily customize for any discipline. And I know that we also have a staff member with us who maybe doesn't teach in classes but works often with students. You can also incorporate these in, in sessions with students um, who are maybe not in a classroom with you. I lost all of you guys, though. So now that I'm showing my screen, I can't see any of you. So I'm not sure what to do. Let me try to. I want to be able to be able to see. OK, great. I got you guys. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my slides? Great. OK. I did switch it. I don't think it's switched on the screen, though. OK, so then I'm just not going to. I'll do it like this. There's my second slide. Can you see the agenda? Yes. So we did our little fun introductions. And like I said, I'm going to walk you through three exercises that can be easily customized for any discipline or for any assignment. So you have the class recap. We're going to talk about an exercise called Rate Your Group and Self-Reflect, and an exercise called Letter to Future Self. For this one, I would like to get your guys' help. So when I have here in parentheses and collaboration, that's me trying to learn from you all. So today won't just be me talking. I want your help from your expertise, and hopefully we can collaborate to improve this assignment. 
I switched the slide. Can you see it? Okay, so here's the first exercise. And before I get into it, I want to start by having a discussion with just us. And so here are the discussion questions that I want to talk about. What are downsides of students missing class? What typically occurs when students are absent? And what do they typically say when they return from or after being absent? What's your experience like? They want to know exactly what they missed, like almost re-lecture the whole class. Mm. Yep. Yes, they do. <laughs> they constantly asking uh, if they have uh, like a couple couple of absences and they lost track themselves of how many times they're being absent and they asking if, if they are on the on the borderline to be dropped because the absence is and I go you have only one absence can you record that yeah okay they want you to they want you to give them step by step instructions for assignments that you might have assigned while they were out when the yeah. instructions are step by step on the assignment if you just yep. go and yeah. read it <laughs> yeah, yeah and then how, how about that other oldie but goodie did i miss anything important yep so, oh yes. every every class everything's is important. important yeah 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 did you guys do anything important yes you always do so yeah it's it's a headache it's not fun when students are absent so to help combat these challenges I've started to implement this assignment. It's called class recaps. And you can choose to facilitate this in whatever fashion works for you, but I use the Canvas discussion board. And these are the instructions that the students see. I wrote, every student in class needs to complete this assignment. We go in alphabetical order, the order presented on the class roster. So I've given them a template they can just copy paste when it's their turn to post the class recap. And here's the template. So in essence, what it is, is each student records what we do that day in class. They just insert the day and time, class recap for Monday, April 23rd. Today in class, we completed the following. So then the students just fill in everything we're doing as we go through the day's class. And then they just post it on the discussion board. I give them some helpful tips on how to write it. For example, begin with an action verb that describes what we did. And I remind them to double check their work to proofread for grammatical mistakes. And the deadline is always the same, that same day of class anytime before 11.59. So what I thought is we could practice this right now, right here, together. Uh, I'm looking alphabetically, and that looks like Salvador is the lucky winner with your last name beginning with an A. And so, Salvador, what you would do then is you're just going to record what we've been doing. And I have to, I have to do the same thing with my students, too. So I'll help my first students. So I'm going to help Salvador. And so Salvador, so I see he's getting his little list ready, something to write with or type. And what have we done so far? We've talked, we've introduced ourselves. Then I went over the agenda. And then I introduced the class recap assignment. And now, Salvador, throughout the rest of today's session, you're just going to be jotting down a quick note of everything we did and talked about. And you don't want to exhaust yourself. I'm not looking for like paragraphs and thorough explanations. Just a quick one-liner, like introduced ourselves, reviewed agenda, discussed class recap. So real short, because we also want to make sure the students are able to be mentally present and aware in class and also participate. And then at the end, at the end, I'll ask Salvador um, before we dismiss can you quickly go over the class recap and we'll all help you to make sure that you didn't forget anything or leave anything out. And this will help our friends who are absent. Uh, Christina said, did you, uh, did you sign it for a grade? I do, I do. Mm -hmm. And the only way I take off points is if they left off things that are huge. 
and then if they forget and they get a zero, they miss the deadline, I will allow them to do the next class recap. Is there anything you guys want to say or comment or, or ask about this assignment? I just have a question. Um, when you, uh, let's say a student doesn't post the recap, will you go behind them and create a recap or do you just? That's a great them? question. That's a great question. So this could be wrong of me and I may need to stop doing this. But uh, what I do is when a student is absent and they do call out their peers when they forget to post the class recap. They will come back and they'll say, Miss Dow, I tried to find out what I missed, but the class recap wasn't there. And then typically that person who was responsible for doing it will get embarrassed and feel a little ashamed. And, and I'll say, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Uh, your, your, your peer didn't post it. Yeah, you're right. They did miss the deadline. Can we, let's have an open class discussion now and let's talk about what we did do last class. And the reason I feel guilty for doing that is because I know that that makes that student who missed it feel badly, but it's a learning opportunity. Um, they will understand like, oh, I didn't get it done. But then also I'll make a little statement where I, I, I will verbally say, please communicate with me if there's something heavy or big going on in your life that I need to know about because emergencies happen life happens, things get in the way of having us complete, like I, the other day, I forgot to put in flex two midterm grades and early alerts, things happen. And if that's the case, just talk to me and let me know and, and we'll have a conversation about that. And one last question, have you noticed a reduction in terms of students emailing you saying, miss, what did I miss? <laughs> totally, yeah, that's all gone because if they do, because they still do, all I say is go to the discussion board on the class recaps, go to the class recap. Yeah. I have a question. Matilda, do you recap verbally every class period to assist that person like you did just now? Or is that only the first time? I yeah. do it only the first time. Mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll try to remember for other days, but every day doesn't work out that way. It just doesn't like this this is kind of getting at metacognition and reflection too and like you said it's repeating previous you know if somebody misses and you guys have to talk about it as a class it's um reinforcing the content so it helps with memory things like that you know remembering the content yeah absolutely do you yes question Matilda uh, do you grade the and whatever anybody posts on the discussion board, is it graded? Yes, I give, I typically, it's, a, it's an easy grade. I typically give full credit if they just post what we did in the day. If they leave off something major, I'll deduct points, but generally it's low stakes, but it's also motivating because they see, oh, I just did that. I followed the directions and I got a hundred, sweet. And then that's sort of the carrot that you dangle and it keeps them engaged and motivated because they see this is something I can do. I just got a hundred for this. Oh, typically, how many times do you do this in a semester? Typically. Oh, how many times do I do this? In, I, I do it for all of my classes. No, for, so, for, for instance, you are teaching English 101. You have, maybe you meet 16 times in a semester. How many times do you do this? Oh, we do this every day. Every day. So, so I every start class. out, yes, I start out every class saying, um, let's, okay, let's talk about the class recap. Who's next? Oh, Brian. Brian's the lucky winner. Brian, it is your turn to do the class recap. Um, so that, yeah, every day, every day. What do and you do when you get through the roster? Do you just start I, over? I start over. I go to the top. Yeah, I do that. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's not true. What I do is I circle back to the people who have zeros, the people who, who forgot to do it. So okay. does everybody have to do it? Yes. Yes. But you, but you review one in particular, right? Uh, I'll review one for sure, at least one. And if, and if it's 
obvious that I need to remind them how to do it, then I will review it as many times if, if it's like clear that they're confused still. Okay. And the benefits of this assignment is that it requires students to be not just physically present, but like Julie mentioned, it touches on metacognition. It makes them be aware. It pushes them to stay alert, active, and engaged because they know they're responsible for reporting what we did that day. And then it helps those who are absent to be able to feel like they're not left out or left behind. Because I don't know about you, but when I was in college and I, if I missed one class, I would always return the next class a little bit nervous or anxious, like, oh, what did I miss? I know I probably missed a lot. So it allows those absent students to confidently return to class, not feeling out of the loop. And also, it allows the absent students an opportunity to take accountability for their own learning when emergencies happen that prevent them from coming to class and they can't come to class. And also, here's the big one for us, it saves us faculty time. We're not having to repeat ourselves over and over again. I'm going to go to exercise two. And before I introduce that one, we'll start with the same fashion. We will start with some discussion questions. Salvador, I'm checking in on you, buddy, because I know you're doing the class recap. And I want to check in with you to see if how you're doing. Is it overwhelming? Is how you feel doing this? No, that's 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 fine. Uh, I just have a little trouble because um, I have a meeting at 11 and um, I may be giving you the recap uh, at that time, whatever we have at that time, because unfortunately I cannot stay the, the whole session. I understand. How about this? Will you throw the football? Throw that football to someone who's going to take over for you when you have to leave. I was going to ask you what happened when uh, because we have some... Uh, dropouts through the semester. And uh, I was doing something similar, not exactly this, uh, and I had a problem that um, two of my students dropped out and they were, they were in, in, in order, in the alphabetical order, there was the two next to, and we had to fill that cap with it. Yeah. I did this on the, specifically on the, on the labs. Here is my alarm for, for that meeting. Um, so I can give you the, the recap now. We got introduction. We revised the agenda. We discussed, oh, you present three exercises and uh, we discussed the first, that was a recap, including the benefits of that. Hi, five, can we do a high five right now, Salvador, me and you, one, two, three. Boom! Nice! Good job. All right, now throw, throw that ball to someone who's going to do the rest of the class recap. Uh, let's see who's the attendance. Um, how about uh, Ms. Venegas? Okay, I'll take over. Nice. Thank, Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. Appreciate it. No problem. Okay, let's go to the next exercise. What is the number one complaint from students? when they're assigned group work? Why do, they, why do they dislike it? Or even think about yourself when you were in college. Did you like it or dislike group work? Why? They don't want to depend on another person. Absolutely, I hear that. Tony in chat says they're not sure who they're going to be assigned to work with and whether they will have to do more work than the others. Yep, that's true. It seems like on Zoom, they're not as comfortable communicating with each other. Um, you know, in a face-to-face -face setting, it's a little different, but I've noticed when I jump in on Zoom groups, there's just a lot of silence. <laughs> and then Alicia in chat says, not everyone does their part. There's always a leech. There's always a mooch, right? There's always leeches. So I feel that. I, I agree with all of those sentiments. So here's what I've done in my classes to try to um, prevent some of these obstacles. I give them an exercise called Rate Your Group. And I give this to them at the beginning of the group assignment. Here are the instructions. Think about how you would rate or grade your group members. How would you rate their performance? 
type their names in a list, and next to each name, give them a grade from zero to 100. So this already empowers them. They're already feeling empowered, like, oh, what? I get a say in, in, in something that happens in this class. So they feel some uh, empowerment, some autonomy. Now explain the grades you assign. Why did you assign those grades based on what? You should consider your group members' participation, their contribution to the workload, and anything else they did or did not contribute. And I reassure them, all of your responses are kept private, and they're for my eyes only. I'm relying on your honesty to get insight into your group's dynamics. I'm going to show you in a second an actual example of a student's assignment where they rated the group members. But before I do, I want to give you the perks of this assignment. Because they're made aware prior that they will be graded by their peers, they tend to put their best foot forward because they go into it knowing, oh, I'm going to be graded by my group members. They get the opportunity to vent or praise their group members. And this allows us faculty to better understand our students because we're able to humanize them. And I'll show you this example in a second. And then also it gives us that special privy into their dynamic, their group dynamic that normally we wouldn't have. So here's the actual student example. I have removed my student's name or full name for privacy. She says, the reason I assigned a 100 to Victoria is because she was excellent at presenting and was talking clearly. And when it was time to work on the presentation, she helped and came up with ideas and edited half the slides. For Brianna, she knew that we had to work on the presentation and we all agreed on a date to work on it. But when the time came, she said she was out of town and that she was busy. And I didn't understand it because why set up a date and not show, especially for schoolwork? But me and Victoria had already PowerPoint. We tried to give her some time, and we told her to come up with some questions, and she never came to it, so we just finished. I feel me and Victoria didn't do anything wrong. Like, we took charge, and we all assigned who gets to do what to make it equal, so no one would have to do more than the others. But it just ended up being only two people to do all the work. I don't know if this would sound harsh, but... What if it was just me and Victoria one group, but I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So with this indication here, too, she said, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. It lets me know that she's sensitive, she's considerate, and um, she's also a, a woman. <laughs> I think that's just a part of our nature, too, as females. We're always, like, treading lightly as to not rock the boat or hurt anyone's feelings. But it helps, it, it, this, this really helps gain insight into their group dynamic. Um, so even though it didn't, you know, curtail that issue that a lot of you shared about, you know, students don't like group work because they're afraid they're going to be stuck with all the work, that still was the case in this situation. Um, however, it did give the student the opportunity to vent and let her know that her voice is heard and what she has to say is valid and received by me. What do you guys think about this activity? Yoda, for this particular case, the case you have given as an example in your class, uh, did Brianna also have a, an assessment of her peers? That is a really good question. Thanks, Thomas. I'm going to add that in my next presentation. I'm going to show Brianna's, her own reflection. So we get her rebuttal. Uh, but her rebuttal, oh, I do have her rebuttal. I'll show it to you right now. It's actually pretty sad. Um, let me show you. Can you, mean, you mean they get to see each other's responses? No. Actually, I'm sorry. It, poor choice of words. It's not a rebuttal. It's Brianna's assignment where she okay. reflects. Oh, okay. Right. And I'm jumping ahead a little bit because there's a second part to this where I have them self-reflect. So they're not just judging and criticizing their peer, their group members. They're, they're also required to self-reflect and look at themselves. What, did, what were their shortcomings? And so I'm jumping ahead because that's what I was going to go through now. But I, I do, since Thomas brought it up, 
Here's what Brianna had to say. The time I spent on this paper wasn't enough because I had so much going on with my family from losing a family member due to COVID to dealing with the guilt of not being able to attend rosary or funeral. And just having to be on Zoom with the rest of my family was just very hard. I think I have all the requirements, blah, 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 blah. So I'll stop there. Um, I have been procrastinating a lot due to personal issues as well and taking the loss of a family member very hard. Wow. I know. I know. And what did I do? It, wow, exactly. And all I did was give them the space and the opportunity to voice and to share and to articulate and communicate what is going on in their lives. I just gave them the floor and boy, did they run with it. Yeah. Now you're almost tempted to want to share that with the other students so they can understand and be empathetic, you know, um, but, but I, I know it's not easy to do that because, you know, privacy, right, and competition. I like that idea though, Tony, because then it you could use some examples with the next class so they know what you're looking for. And it kind of clues them in to being a little bit more open-minded about the behaviors of their teammates, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Each step, oh. what's, what's expected. I think open-mindedness is really important, but also advocating and communicating. Because when we don't communicate with others, then others are just left to make assumptions. So right. I'm just assuming that you're being a bag of lazy bones. That's mm -hmm. a wrong assumption. Yeah. But that could have been curtailed had Brianna just simply said, look, guys, I'm really sorry. I have some personal issues in my family going on right now. I, it's not that I don't want to do the work. It's that I just, I can't right now. And, mm -hmm. and then you know, she doesn't have to go any further than that. And those other team members would have understood, okay, she's got a personal family issue. We understand that. So and that's why it's such a good teaching moment for like no. future classes. It's such a yeah. good example to show future classes. Yeah. Because you could say, okay, well, what could have Brianna done if she's yeah. in a situation? What's a good right. way to deal with that with her teammates or, you know, yeah. talk about it with her teammates? Yeah. I mean, it's difficult when you're going through a personal, you know, um, adversity like that. It's difficult, especially if they're young, if they're not, you know, if they're, Traditional college students, they're young. They haven't maybe experienced that type of adversity, so it's difficult. Um, if I could just say, we did, I did this, something similar in one of my classes. So my um, my herbaceous plants class every spring, um, the, the group project, and I don't ordinarily assign group projects, um, but for this class, it's um, at the very beginning of the sister, system semester, excuse me, we walk through the campus, and I already have a list of um, areas that the college has approved for us to either, you know, add to a, a certain bed or clean up a bed or change it, or if it's completely blank, then we, we totally redo the bed. Um, and so we walk the campus, I tell them which beds are available. It's their responsibility to get themselves in teams. Um, based on the number of students in the class, I tell them how many members about each one needs to have. They pick their team members, and then they pick the bed that they want to um, renovate. And then throughout the course of the semester, you know, they have assignments based on that group project. So this is their big, their big group project for their for their class. They um, then they come to me, tell me what who their team is, what bed they have selected, and then later in the in the semester, or probably later in the in the next month, they give me a full sketch of what they want to do, what plants they need, and all of that. So it's like, you know, um, it very it's very structured. But at the very beginning, I tell them, I will provide you with um, uh, a critique form that you can both critique your, your team members and yourself. And, and I, you know, it's questions. I give them full questions. I don't leave it completely up to them. They don't like it. They all across the board, they don't like it. They tell me, Ms. Vogler, we would much rather say to our team member that maybe isn't pulling their weight, hey, you're not pulling your weight. You need to help us. You know, you're not doing enough. We need more help. Um, get off your phone or whatever. We don't want to rat anybody out like this. And I tell them, look, it, this is just for me. This is simply for me. And they're like, no, no, we don't. 
please don't ask us to do that again. We don't like that at all. I want totally to get that on it. That's, a, that's a big. Go for that, it. Sorry. That's a big part of, I, I can just speak for myself being a Latina where I grew up in the hood. That's a big, you do not snitch. You yeah. don't snitch. snitch yeah, they didn't want to rat their, their team members out at all. And, you know, I had to respect that. I thought, well, I get it. Now, here's the deal. I don't typically have traditional students. Most of my students are already adults. They're already adult learners. They have their, their fire and forget. They tell them what to do and they make it happen. Occasionally, I have a very, um, you know, brand new to college, right out of high school. Um, and typically what happens is the rest of the class kind of um, just rallies around and helps and teaches. And, you know, that doesn't mean I don't have any problems in the classes because I do. But I have, a, I have a lot of veterans in my class. I have a lot of self-starters. I don't have the same issues like that. The, the other um, uh, idea that you had with uh, if you miss a class, you know, I think that's really cool for certain subjects and for certain groups. For mine, I don't need to do that because one of the first things on my syllabus is if you miss a class, it's your responsibility to go to one of your class team members and get the, the whatever you miss. I don't get those emails. What did I miss? I don't know. Check with your check with your your classmates. I don't. That's not my job. So I don't have that. You know, I don't deal with that part. I can see how teachers would, but I don't. So I have yeah. a different group. The dynamics with my students really are not the norm. That's great. That's great. great for you. Yeah. And and also remember that the class recap assignment is not just beneficial for those who are absent, it's beneficial for those who are there because it, it again, Medicaid, make, making them consciously aware too. No, I but, agree, I agree. I really think um, this, I was thinking uh, that checking in with the groups to see how things are going, you know, and maybe doing this more than once, this reflection, I was also thinking you guys what you were saying is when they're not, they don't want to like wrap people out. Maybe part of it is um, what have you done? What are the, at the check-in, maybe you ask them what's not going well and what are you going to do to try to solve the problem? Like, have you talked to the team members? So you can teach them how to try to resolve the problem before they have to give at the end written feedback on the performance of their team members. So you, 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 you know, you, you're teaching them to be proactive with solving the problems they're having in the team before, you know, so they don't feel so much like they're ratting people out. They're just reporting, you know, this was the problem. I did this to mitigate it. Did it solve the problem? Yes or no. You know, so, cause we're trying to conflict resolution, you know, and working, collaboratively so that's great Julie thank you Monticella I see your hand raised um yeah because I kind of had a question something um I guess in in the atmosphere of, of what we're talking about because um of course it, it, I've done group uh work and I've had the you know someone is not participating someone's not doing um but also kind of speaking to the opposite when you have a student that is doing the work that it has, um, you know, done, given their percent, but then they, um, I guess, maybe become critical of everyone else's work and think, well, it's not good enough. Um, so how, and, and those can be, you know, the older students. Um, I've also had some of the high school students who in the group work, um, kind of kind of become kind of the narcissist <laughs> we're thinking I'm my your your work does not stand up to par with mine um and, and so kind of uh how do you approach it from that level because in in my experience I've kind of um I've I've kind of had to step back and tell them well wait you're not the expert <laughs> in this um in this field so it's your job to work with the group um, but I guess what is a certain approach is for that type of student? I think I'll open the floor to others. I will say, Maricela, that I've had very similar experience 
this student was a natural born leader, but she was also hypercritical. And it was so obvious during the presentation when one of her peers, it was their turn to present, she was doing this stuff. Oh, oh you forgot this part. You forgot that part. Just micromanaging and like she's the perfectionist. And it was sort of hard for me to watch. Um, so that's why I'm calling on my colleagues to help help with this. Uh, what, what I did was I just, I was just like this the whole time. What? I was just stunned and I didn't really know what to do. I didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. So I just watched him like shop and I was like, oh my gosh, this girl is hardcore. So sorry for her husband. <laughs> I just... I think that we, you know, we always, we all know as teachers that working in teams is good, you know, like it's a positive strategy and it's a life strategy, but we don't know necessarily how to teach people how to be good team members. What, you know, what does it look like? What does it not look like? What does it sound like? What does it not sound like? So maybe just um, a, a before group work talking about what is a good team member, you know? Kind of setting some expectations. Uh, I did put our rubrics from, you know, because teamwork is a core curriculum, core objective, or we call ILO at PAC. And um, so we do have rubrics that kind of try to define what a good team member is. So you could pull from that. That's a great idea. Devana? I was going to piggyback on that, um, putting it in the rubric as being an active listener as well and being able to get along with your group members and not just on the rubric who participated and who did what, but how are you getting along? How are you having a relationship with your group? How are you guys coming to terms with differences of opinions and actually solving those problems, which is communication because you are going to get that out in the real world. I love that. Absolutely. This is good stuff. Thanks. The other thing that I did when I was, when the students do their their um, project, when they work on their project, is I go around to each of the, the garden beds that we're working on. And I spend a few minutes um, before I get up to them. I'm watching from a distance so they, can, they can't see me, but I'm watching how they work with each other, how they're interacting, who's working, who's on their phone, you know, that kind of thing. And then I approach them. And of course, you watch the differences once the instructor approaches, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a, oh, you know, um, I'm working, I'm working for those that were not. Um, but also at the very beginning of the semester, they kind of get a, listen, you guys need to treat each other with respect. You need to treat each other um, without any type of offensive language, with any type of, you know, I expect you guys to treat each other with respect. That's what you're going to get from me. And I want that respect back. Um, but I also want the respect between all of you as well. And really, that's been a very, a very, very small portion of it. Because, again, I'm working with mostly adults that really don't have any issues with that type of thing. So you don't ever, Anna, you don't ever get early college, high school students? In, very uh, rarely. Uh, okay. Very rarely. I might have one or two. Um, I think since I've been teaching, I think I've had three. And oh man, you're so blessed. <laughs> you're so lucky. Well, it you know, it's it's because of the field. It's not a lot of high school students are interested in learning the science of plants. So yeah. it's just mm. part of it. No. I'm going to Yeah. yeah go ahead, Tony. What are you going to No, I was going to say a joke, but I better not. Okay, the science of plants. Haha. <laughs> okay, so um I'm going to talk to you about another aspect of this assignment where students aren't just rating and reflecting on their group members. They're not just rating and reflecting on themselves, but now they rate and reflect on me and my abilities and how well did I facilitate, create, design this activity. Um, so I tell them, what did you, um, to answer, what did you like about this assignment? What were the positives that came out? What were some beneficial aspects? What did you dislike? What were the negatives? What were the downsides? So here's where we have, as faculty have to have thick skin. And I learned from my mistake. Here's what my students said. The thing I disliked about this assignment was that we didn't get enough information 
on how we could have done the assignment. We didn't know we could use Google Slides. And it had us and it had us have a hard time on how to make our presentation fun and creative. Because I told them the presentation would be fun and creative. One negative is that we didn't have as much time outside of class because some of them had to work or had other classes the same day. One downside is that when we were in the breakout room before the presentation, we didn't have enough time to help each other out. And so two things I took away from that critique was that I could have been more specific in giving them examples on how they can make their presentation fun and creative. All I said was be fun and creative, assuming and taking for granted that they would know all of the different vehicles they could use and tools such as Google Slides or whatever. Um, so I learned that I need to be more detailed with specific examples that they could pull from. The other thing I learned was that I just wasn't considerate with their time. Um, as the student mentioned, working outside of class and also having other classes, I was short-sighted and I just didn't give them enough time, even in the breakout rooms. Um, and I reflect on that and I think, you know what, Matilda, he's right. I didn't give enough time. Um, so that, that helped me a lot. So this is the idea of not waiting until the end of the semester to give student surveys to get our feedback. We can always get student feedback throughout the semester. Mm. I think what, one thing that makes them fearful of doing that, though, is that there would be backlash from me. Like if they said something negative, they're like, I'm not going to say anything negative about Ms. Stout. I don't want to get failing grades. Um, so it's important iterate that you know this won't affect your grade I am asking what I did well and what I didn't do well any mm -hmm. thoughts about that that sounds good it's it's also teaching them how to you know they can give feedback they're going to have to give feedback to other people throughout their lives so mm -hmm. we, we might as well teach them how to give critical feedback in a objective, you know, respectful way. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just see like all of these things you're setting up for them are all learning experiences for life. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and aside from that, yes, as a teacher, you know, we know that the core end of course evaluations, you know, they, they don't, we don't pay attention to those too much, but, and we need to have our own formative assessment, you know, assessing ourselves along the way so that we can adjust. So mm -hmm. good job. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to say, it's Candace. I was going to say, I think what I like about it is that you're getting the whole class, right? So if you have 30 students in your class and you get one negative comment that it wasn't enough time, it also gives you a real assessment, whether like, did I really not give enough time if I have one out of 30 of my students say it wasn't enough time? Um, and mm -hmm. to piggyback, Julie, what you said, I do like the fact we're going to have to give feedback. So we have to learn to give constructive criticism. Everywhere you work in the workplace, even us as faculty and staff, when we're talking to each other, we may not you know, always agree with the faculty, but we can't go in and just pound them. How do I say it in an objective manner so that my message gets a Cross, clear and concise and respectfully. And that's what we really need to focus on. Because, you know, in advising, that's the one thing, you know, when I talk to students all the time, it's like, okay, let me see the message you sent to the instructor or the professor, you know, because they may think that they're coming off, you know, to ask their question or to give their feedback in a respectful manner. And when you read it, you're like, you really sent that to the professor <laughs> like that? <laughs> Of course, that would be their response back. Um, so I really do like both of them, even with the group one. If you have five people in a group and four people are saying, hey, Brianna didn't pull her weight, um, then there might be some validity to that versus her saying, well, I did pull my weight and I did everything they asked of me. But when four other people are saying that, then it has you have to have some self-reflection and say, is this really how I perceive it this way, but is that really how it happened? Yeah, so look, gathering all the evidence and looking at it uh, as um, the big picture. And hopefully these, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, hopefully these skills translate to how hard they go on us on a ratemyprofessor.com. So when they go to rate my professor, they don't hold anything back there. 
What were you going to say, Julie? I I was involved with the end of course exams for or the end of course evaluations for a while. So I I had done some research. You know how can we, so we, there are some universities and schools out there that have implemented programs to teach the students how to give feedback on the student evaluations. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah, that is we, really can, interesting. we can find examples of that because we're talking about like how do we up the the response rate, and you know so it's worthwhile to also for faculty to mention that they listen to their feedback and they incorporate what they've learned from students into their work. So, you know, reassuring them that the time they spend giving us feedback isn't for naught, that we actually are going to do something with it. Good point. Also, yeah, validating that their voice matters. Here's the last exercise. I'm being considerate of the time. I realize we only have seven minutes left, so I'm going to go pretty quickly through this to respect your time. This is an activity where I needed your help in improving because when I was teaching face-to-face, -face, this assignment was easily facilitated. Not so easy now that we are all virtual. So here's the assignment. I give them an envelope, and I tell them to handwrite their home address. So they address the letter to themselves. And this right here is a challenge. It's amazing how many, I guess it's not really amazing if you think about it. Why, why is there any need to mail? When was the last time any of you mailed a letter? When was the last time you wrote someone's address on an envelope and put a stamp on it? I can't even remember the last time I did. <laughs> Love doing that. That's like something my mom was like, you have to write thank you notes. Like, <laughs> My, my son had to write thank you letters after graduation. He didn't know where to put their address in the in the envelope. Like, where did they go? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I remember that was a skill in elementary. That was actually an assignment we had to do, practice yes. addressing the envelope. Yes, it was. But they're not taught that now. They're not taught that now. So that's but, that's what's fun about this assignment. And I not, told you, what's that, Tony? Well, I was going to say they're not taught cursive either. They're not taught cursive either. I tell them, begin the letter with dear, and then they insert their own name. And I tell them, write to your future self about where you'd like to be by the time you open this. So it depends on when I mail them. I Sometimes I mail them at midterm or a little before midterm so that they get the letter at midterm, or I'll mail them a little before final so that they get it right after they do the final exam. And in the letter, they need to talk about their academic and personal goals. So not just where they want to be. Like, by the time I open this letter, dear Stephanie, I it will be final exam week. And um, I, I would like to be in a position where I've made all A's in my classes or, or I've passed all my classes. Or a personal goal is I've been really wanting to... Uh, a run for student body, a student body officer or government position. It can be motivating. It's also a reality check. So it is sad when some of them open the letter and they see, I by this time, Michael, when you open this, you should be passing all your classes. And when they open it and it's like they're not passing or they're, they know they're going to be dropped or they've already been dropped or something, it pushes them to hold themselves accountable. It also, like we said, teaches them how to address an envelope. It's customizable. You determine when you want to assign this. Do you want them to open the letters at the beginning or the middle? And again, customizable for any class. Now, here's, my, here's where I need help. When I'm in face-to-face, -face, I give them the envelopes. In a classroom face-to-face, -face, they print their letters, and they stuff it in the envelope so I never see it. So I want to respect their privacy. And I tell them, I am not going to open or read your assignment. This is for you only. Um, but now that we're in Zoom, this is why I need your help. I don't know how to do this. So I, I haven't facilitated this assignment since we've been virtual. And I'm not well, tell them to, to, to create uh, a Microsoft Word envelope and uh, attach that file when they, you know, you know how you can pull up an envelope? You know, just fill it out, save it, and then have them send it to you, the envelope itself. 
And so they, you'll see that they can write, type the address, you know, on an envelope and all that stuff. That's one idea. I mean, I don't know. And then, no, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. But then about the letter, I thought, well, they can just smell it, to send it to me. But then I'm like, no, that doesn't give them reassurance or confidence that I'm not going to read it and that it's kept private. So could they just open it at a different time? Like you, you tell them what you're doing, explain the whole thing, have them save that file, and then on their calendar, you know, whenever, if you want it to be before midterms, after midterms, or right before finals, put it on your calendar on April 20th. You're going to open up this file that you've written today. Don't open it before, but only open it on that day. And then that way they have total confidence that it's just sitting in their computer. It's not gone anywhere. And they can open it at that point. That works. I think that's a valid, yeah. And we all come to agreement at the beginning that we're going to stay true to our word. We're not going to open it. We're not going to read it. I mean, after a week, they're going to forget about it because they become overwhelmed with everything anyway. So it's not like it's going to be bugging them. That's true. Um, I know you said that um, you didn't want them to send it to you because you didn't want them to think that you were going to read it. But I don't know if you could promise them you're not going to read it or something because they could just send you an email and then you could send the email back to them at whatever you know, you decide to let them, because then they could reflect on what they had said and how they've changed. That, I think that would be a great follow-up. Yeah. And I wanted them to set, send it to me so that I could actually print it. Um, it, it does require a little bit more work on my end. Uh, we're at 11.29. So I just want to ask so we can wrap this up. Alicia, I know that Salvador, before he left, he told you. Can you go over the class recap? Whoa, that's pressure. I went ahead and posted it. I typed it out. Is that okay? Do you want me to read over it? Oh, the overachiever. Yes, Alicia. <laughs> perfect. She put it all in chat. That's good, Alicia. I see you just called me. So I'm going to do this in my Zoom class because I normally have them verbally communicate it. But this is even better because when they type it, then now they just have to copy paste what they put in chat in Canvas, in the discussion board, so that's even better. Look at that, her, her bulleted list. We introduced ourselves. Beautiful job. Can we give uh, Alicia some snaps? Yay, Alicia, <laughs> good job. Thank you. Yay. You know, and I arrived late, so I'm actually cut, cutting and pasting what she wrote, and I'm going to use it. Okay. Thank and you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was also going to ask um, if we could share what was one thing you learned that you plan on implementing, how you customize, but uh, it's 1130. But here's my contact info. And I think Julie's got a survey for you guys, too. Yes, thank you Matilda. so much to Matilda. Wonderful presentation. And thanks to everybody for participating in the discussion. That was awesome. And yes, if you could please click on that link in the chat and give uh, the, some feedback. Perfect group. I right, have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Great job, Thank Matilda. Thanks for being here. Awesome Great job, job, Matilda. Good, good job, Matilda. I want to good incorporate job. all this stuff. Thanks, guys. Bye. -bye. Good job.